3-0. Alex Pereira recreates the past. Crazy how it all happened almost the same way as last time with just an MMA element to it. Alex Pereira and Adesanya started off the fight going back and forth a bit, which is almost exactly how their second fight was. Then Izzy's right hand was starting to land, and Pereira didn't really have good defense against it. Izzy was kind of throwing a delayed jab and then stepping far in for his right hand, and for some reason, even off their kickboxing fight, Pereira never really had the necessary defense to avoid that punch. And if you remember what Adesanya used to say about that kickboxing fight with them, he said I was only using my right hand. Well, it's pretty funny because most of his success in this fight was actually from his right hand as well. Outside of the takedowns and the grappling, striking wise, the majority of his success was the same punch he said that he only had in their second fight. It's not that he only used his right hand, it's the fact that his right hand is like the main thing that works against Pereira. And it looked like the fight was getting away from Pereira, not only because the right hand was landing again, but also you start to see that Adesanya had different kind of intentions going into the later rounds. He stopped actually throwing these power punches as much, and he started to get more into his safe approach of riding out the rounds and getting to a decision. He knew he was on top after the third round, and in the fourth and fifth, you definitely saw that side of him, just like he was for his entire championship reign, doing enough to win the rounds and get this to a comfortable decision. But he did it differently than when he did against the other fighters. With the other fighters, he was able to stick from a distance and use jabs and leg kicks and just move away from them in order to win those fights. With Pereira, it was different, and it's pretty ironic, actually, because a lot of people were going into this thinking that Adesanya's grappling was going to be the main difference of the fight, and it was. It definitely showed in the third round when he got on top of Pereira after capitalizing on that overstepping that Pereira was trying to do, where it looked like he tried to trip Adesanya out. Adesanya used that to reverse it into a slam, tripping out Pereira backwards, and getting on top of him, using a lot of wrist control to hold the position against a much bigger man. Very intelligent work from Adesanya, a guy who's never got a takedown in his entire UFC career. But it's interesting because part of the quote-unquote grappling actually costed him the fight. It was in the clinch though, not on the ground. If you notice what Adesanya's defense was in this fight, it was very different than what he was doing against Whitaker and Vittori and Kelvin Gaslam and these other guys that he fought previously in MMA. All of his defense were around the clinch, every single bit of it. And there's a few reasons why. Number one, he doesn't want to clinch up with those MMA fighters because they have better wrestling and grappling than he does. He doesn't want to necessarily get too close to them. And also, those guys are much shorter with their reach and their height. So he can post away with a long post, keep his arm extended, and just move away from them. Or just jab him in the face from long range, and they'll never be able to get in on him. That's exactly how he's been winning with most of his championship reign. But against someone like Pereira, who has the same reach has the same height. With Pereira, he couldn't post and get away. This is something we talked about in the prediction video and why this fight was so different for Adesanya. Even when he gets on the fence, Adesanya used to always use lateral movement away from these shorter guys to be able to create enough of an angle to get around them. Very dangerous to do something like that against a guy who has one of the most notorious left hooks in all of combat sports. Adesanya did not want to angle off into it by accident because all it takes is one and he'd be KO'd. So Adesanya was clinching up with Pereira whenever he got pressured back instead of using his usual defense he uses against other MMA fighters. And another reason why he was clinching up with Pereira specifically was he was confident in his grappling skill against him. He's been in MMA much longer. So if anything happens, if it goes to the ground, he's confident that he'll be better down there, which is the first time in his career. But I don't think he noticed the striking opportunities that it gave Pereira. In the fifth round specifically, Alex Pereira started to throw right straights. I don't know if you noticed that. Like For the other rounds, he's throwing a lot of left jabs and left hooks. Not a lot of right straights. In the fifth round, he started to use it. He knew what Adesanya was going for at that round. He knew that the way to get out of this pressure is I have to clinch up with him. I have to reach forward, neutralize the action, bring him in, and also use my clinch advantage to reverse the position on him. Well, when you keep reaching forward like that, you're opening up the center. He knew once I get Adesanya's back to the fence, and I establish a jab and put the pressure on him, he's going to want to clinch up with me. What does clinching do? It opens up the center. And Alex Pereira was shooting down that center, that opening, with his right straight. And if you look back at their second kickboxing fight, this is actually a similar kind of thing that was happening there. Adesanya would be up against the ropes, and because his opponent is just as long and just as tall as he is, also possessing that dangerous left hook, he was forced to constantly clinch up with him, and Pereira even back then was throwing left hooks in response, and they weren't working. So Pereira actually made the adjustment in MMA against Adesanya here and found a solution to this defense. And the second right straight in that fifth round he caught him with actually started the finish, was the beginning of the end. It wasn't necessarily that left hook that a lot of people see, it was actually the right straight that started it. And the way you can see it is, Adesanya's grip was weak, very weak, to the point where Alex was just able to shrug it off. And when he pushed Adesanya's arms to the side, Adesanya fell back to the cage. Why'd he fall into the fence like that? It looked like his body was about to go limp. And then what's the next punch that landed? 
Pereira throws a straight right uppercut as Adesanya goes for the clinch again, opening up the center. He's rocked at this point, he's trying to move away, he trips over his own feet due to himself being rocked, and Pereira chases him down off an angle, not straight at him, off an angle, and hops to his side with a left hook. Notice how he didn't hop into Adesanya, he hopped to his left side, because again, he knows that Adesanya is going to go for the same clinch again. He's trying to reach forward, mostly with his left hand, and anticipating that, Pereira found the angle for his left hook around the hand. A lot of people would say this is an early stoppage, but all Adesanya was doing in this moment was trying to keep clinching up. Pereira had the solution to it, and there was nothing Adesanya was doing. This was definitely not going to end well for him at all. Just look at the defense, look at what Adesanya is doing to try to get away from these punches. His hands are never up, number one. Number two, he keeps going for the clinch again, cracked for it, and then he starts moving his head with his hands down. He's going to get hit again. I think the ref did a great job of stopping this fight and not allowing Adesanya to get knocked out cold because that's what it was looking like. I think Mark Goddard did a good job. Alex Pereira looked good for the first and second round, so it's one on one going into the third. Very impressive to see that Pereira actually went in for a takedown, but it looked like his muscle, his size was a bit too overpowering, and Adesanya couldn't defend the whole stride backwards. He was trying to get away, but the strength and the size was a bit too much and carried him to the ground. Very similar to the way that Jan Blachowicz was actually getting him down. Then the third round comes, and this is where it seemed like it was the beginning of the end for Alex Pereira because Israel Adesanya capitalized on Pereira overstepping. It looked like he wanted to trip Izzy, but Izzy slammed him in reverse. He used that same momentum with the body lock and tripped out Pereira backwards, slamming him into the mat. And from there, it looked like Adesanya definitely had the superior Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Of course, though, he's been training in MMA for a very long time, so he's definitely gonna have these grappling skills over someone like Pereira, who hasn't been doing this for that long. Pereira only has eight professional fights in MMA, and he's only been in the UFC for four fights, and now he's the champion, which is crazy to think about. But it looked like after that third round, that Pereira was tired. It took him a long time to get back up, and he didn't really have the necessary technique. For an example, DC was pointing it, and he was absolutely on the money. Pereira was trying to stand up instead of fighting off the grip, instead of fighting the hands off. It's going to require a lot of energy from you to get up without taking away the control of their opponent, and the control is all in that wrist. Adesanya was holding down that wrist, and even though Pereira is bigger than him, it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. He used so much energy to get back up. He even rolled for the knee bar, did a lot of things out there that wasn't necessarily too efficient, for his cardio. And for kickboxers specifically, their cardio for wrestling and grappling is going to be much worse than their cardio for striking because the body mechanics and the muscle memory is completely different. Grappling uses different kind of muscle groups and also at a different kind of pace, constantly testing up and constantly using your body with no end. Striking is a lot more with fast twitch muscle fibers in order to throw out your strikes and snap it at the end, and there's a lot more rest in between. In the fourth round, it seemed to confirm that Pereira was compromised. He was gassed out, but Israel Adesanya has to be perfect for 25 minutes. Pereira needs to be perfect one time, and that's exactly how this fight played out, just like in their second kickboxing fight. And Pereira just has way too much perseverance. He is way too durable. He's way too tough to fight in that kind of safe, methodical way. When the fifth round comes, you saw a sense of urgency from Pereira, and a lot of it has to be credited to his corner, who spoke some sense into him and they told him this is not a five round fight anymore this fight is one round now you have to go out there and you have to knock him out and that's exactly what he looked to do right from the beginning forward pressure taking a few kicks and then he attacks with a jab that got Adesanya all the way back to the fence this is the kind of pressure that was vacant in the third and fourth rounds and you instantly knew that he was going for the knockout trying to find the finish when Adesanya got him to the tie plum and Pereira didn't accept it he didn't settle into the clinch like he did before many times where Adesanya went to clinch up with him Pereira actually accepted it and he stayed in the clinch this time he actually tried to pull his head out and rip body shots different kind of intentions now from Alex Pereira and what were Adesanya's reactions to all of the aggression clinch up and hold him off he didn't really attempt to strike back with anything too meaningful in that fifth round it looked like he's trying to continue that game plan of stalling the rounds out a bit and only find moments where he can attack instead of actually fight back with a similar kind of intentions that Pereira was coming at him with and everything seemed to have gone downhill for Adesanya when he got his kick checked Pereira checked the light kick that seemed to have hurt Adesanya a bit causing him a trip over himself and this was very important for Pereira as he kept the pressure after this, the entire round until the finish. He never let up. He never allowed Adesanya to get away from this pressure. And that's what set up the finish of the fight. And now Alex Pereira is officially 3-0 against Adesanya. And Alex Pereira not only becomes the UFC champion, this is much more than that. He is potentially one of the greatest combat sports athletes of all time. He's a two-division glory kickboxing champion, light heavyweight and middleweight. And now he's the UFC champion and he did it in four UFC fights eight professional MMA fights, he just beat the long reigning Adesanya, 
and I'm very curious to see what Alex Pereira does next. They're probably going to run this back, maybe, due to the fact that Adesanya was a champion for a very long time. Now Pereira gets in a very dangerous terrain because there's Whitaker and Whitaker is fighting Paulo Costa in February. If he beats Paulo Costa, we might see Whitaker have to fight Pereira. If that happens, unless Pereira is able to catch him in the middle of a blitz, Whitaker is going to out-wrestle this guy and probably submit him. Pereira's grappling is not near the level it should be to handle some of these grapplers. It's enough to fight with Adesanya, who definitely didn't show to have that great of wrestling or grappling. But against the other guys like Vittori and Whitaker, he's going to be a lot of danger when these guys shooting on him. So I can't wait to see what comes up next. It could be Adesanya or it could be the winner of Whitaker versus Costa. If Costa beats Whitaker, which is very unlikely, they might just go and do Pereira versus Adesanya again. But if Whitaker beats Costa, I don't know how you could deny him a title shot. The guy has been cleaning out the other contenders. In fact, he would beat more contenders than even Adesanya did. So I'm super excited about Pereira's future. I'm curious to see what Adesanya does as well. If he doesn't get the immediate title shot, maybe they can do him versus like Sean Strickland or something, or they could do a, a third Whitaker fight or something in there, or he could try his hand at light heavyweight. There's a lot of options for both these guys at the moment. So I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown, and if you did, make sure to give this a like, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.